show and tell a little bit of a review with some brown pens. I wanted to start off today though with a answer to a question or at least a suggestion. It was the vlog where I did the mountain streams and the rocks. Somebody asked how do I know what to paint? How do I decide what to paint? You know you get out there and I understand the question. Uh, it's a busy scene. There's a lot going on and everywhere you turn it's very complex. How do I narrow it down to what I want to paint. I really didn't have an answer because uh, it's not something I think about. It's just something that I do. I just sit down and start painting. I, I zero in on something. Uh, I do understand that a complex scene can cause, uh, you know, a lot of indecision and especially if you don't know what to paint. Sorry for the phone that keeps dinging. But for me it's very intuitive. I, I don't have uh, really a formula or a tip on how I do it, but I can offer you a suggestion if you're having trouble uh, framing that image, and that's just use a viewfinder. There are several out there on the market and you can easily make your own. I like this one. Um, this is called the Zoom Finder. Uh, now you may have seen there's a little kind of it looks like a giant slide. There's a little gray one that you can buy. Um, I always thought that was too small. It's fine for on location like we're talking about for holding up and framing a scene and you can go back and forth. Uh, but essentially that's what I'm talking about, framing your scene. And I like this one better because this can also be used to crop photos. Uh, it's, it's sizable down to a very small, to, from a large to a small and you have a square format. You may not think it, but when you're on location, this actually helps quite a bit. Um, you can hone in and really zero in on little small segments of the scene and give yourself a border and then you can imitate that border on your paper, on your watercolor paper. As the added bonus though, as I said, being used for photos. So if you're using your, you can use your own photos. I'm just using uh, magazine photos. Um, you know, this is the square one. And you can you can crop down. I'm trying to do this one-handed, but you can crop down to a fairly small little piece. And then here's sort of the landscape or the portrait view size. You know, if you want to do a little study of part of that tree, it's amazing how just adding a border or cropping something that you see can give you ideas. But in addition, you can do that in a live scene, you know. Uh, this is nothing to look at, but, you know, you can, you can pick out compositions. And if you'd rather just make your own, just get a mat. Uh, these, you can cut your own mat or you can just whack something quickly out of construction paper. Uh, but these little mats are like two bucks at a craft store. And the way I quickly make my own viewfinder is just, just cut the corners. And I just have these little bulldog clips. It's not as, you know, it's not as slick to use as that zoom finder, but it works. You can usually get these little bulldog clips at the same craft store. I did. You can use it to frame whatever it is you're looking at. So anyway, if you're having trouble uh, figuring out what to paint in a scene, how to compose it, those actually work pretty well. All right, so what else? Christy Rice sent me uh, her latest coloring book. If you're not familiar, you may remember my review of her watercolor coloring books. Now, this is her newest one that's out. It's really, really nice. As you know, I'm not a coloring book channel. Uh, I, I kind of got started in doing a couple of reviews um, just to see, because I was asked uh, if watercolor would work in them, and most coloring books are designed for dry media, um, but there are some watercolor coloring books coming out. Uh, um, 
or I think Pepin was the first to make a series of them. There's a couple others I've seen out there. In my opinion, though, hers are the best. Hers are just really nice. The pages are just so helpful, you know, with the color of wheel. She's got creative write-ups on all of her illustrations. Her illustrations are beautiful. I like that they are always like the fact that they were sort of grayscale and not the heavy black line that a lot of them are. She has a recommended list of, of supplies over here. But her newest book is called Summer Cutting Garden and it's by and large a floral book. Uh, let me just show you a quick leaf through of the art. I think her choice of watercolor paper is better than any that I've seen on the market. And like I say, there's only probably about four or five different makers of watercolor coloring books. By the way, this can be used with other media. You don't have to use it with just watercolor. But it is designed with watercolor paper to be used with watercolor. So it's got some little woodland creature illustrations. But she's also done some nice little isolated botanicals. I guess you could say. And the wreath. There's some birds. You like to paint birds. Some vegetables. So a very summery theme. Looks like hydrangea. I'm not sure. Cactus. There's a very botanical looking page. Anyway, so if you're into coloring books, especially watercolor in your coloring books, uh, that's probably one you'll want to pick up. And I'll link to my previous um, review of her books. They're basically all the same kind of layout and format. And I did an interview in that video if you haven't seen it, so I'll link to that below. What is it? Let's tell us what it is. <laughs> okay, since you insist. Uh, one of the sites I frequent a lot is Jet Pins, and I love their site. Um, they're not paying me. They, they don't sponsor me in any way. I kind of wish they had an affiliate program uh, where I could make a little commission because I could send people there for a lot of stuff. I do need things. But they have a great website. They Any orders, I think, over $25 are free shipping. Uh, they have just about any kind of pen, writing, calligraphy, fountain pen, pencils, you name it. Uh, any type of utensil like that you might want. And they have uh, guides. They have a, a extensive library of guides. And I have spent a lot of time on their guides. Basically, it's they take all the products of one category, like white ink or white gel pens or uh, fountain pen ink. They take all the products that they sell in one category and then compare them in very extensive comparisons with charts and write-ups and that sort of thing. So uh, I'll put their links down below and the guides links because that's very useful. But one of the things they do that has grabbed more than a dollar or two of my money are their samplers. Back in October during Inktober, I did, uh, I reviewed several pens from their brush pen sampler. And it's really nice because they take uh, again, a category, bundle them together. It could be five, six pens. In this case, it's 10. And they send them to you. And you can try them all out if you're undecided on what kind of pen is best. And I did that with the brush pen sampler. Well, this is their brown gel pen sampler. I love drawing in brown ink. Okay, there's not many choices out there. Like Pigma Micron has one. There's a few others. Uh, but I've never really tried drawing with any gel pens. So uh, join me today for a quick little review of this 10 pen sampler set of brown gel pens. Okay, so this is the Pilot Frixion, and that's a 0.4 millimeter, so very fine. And it's a very, I would say it's a very sepia color, but I like the uh, precision. And it's not very uh, brilliant in color, which, which I like. I prefer it not to be. It does loosen up in water. So it would be an okay pen to draw with if you're not going to watercolor. Or maybe you wanted to just tone your uh, drawing with the ink itself. Okay, there are actually two Pilot High Tech C's. One is a 0.25. 
and the other is a point four. And they're designed a little different, but they're both uh, high tech C. Uh, this one here is called the high tech C Mica. As I said, I will be putting a link down below to the page where they sell these, and you can see their complete list. Very red brown ink, but I think that's cool. A 0.25 I think is about as fine as you can get in a gel pen. It's as fine as I've ever seen. Right, we'll be letting that dry. Let's try the 0.4 millimeter mica. Definitely bolder, a richer brown. Kind of the same red brown, but it's, it's a deeper tone. Not permanent in water, and that's what I was expecting. But I'll tell you, that's really cool if you're, if you're just wanting to do pen and ink. You can see the redness coming out. I mean, that's almost red wash. Next is the Pilot Juice. We've got two Pilot Juice pens. A .38 and a .5. And these are clickers. So basically the same pen, just different weights. First the .38 Coffee. Nice. A, a, a very much a sepia like this up here. So almost black. All right, let's try the 0.5 millimeter brown. Holy moly. Uh, that's the reddest brown yet. a little more water fast than the other ones not permanent this this doesn't loosen up as much as this one so far this one has loosened up with water the most this one just barely you could probably actually put some color washes over this and if you didn't mind it mixing a little bit with red brown that would be workable all right next we have two uniball signos one is a capped, and that's a 0.38, and the other is a clicker, and that's a 0.7, and these are both uh, designated as brown black. So first the 0.7, uh, that's pretty much black. As it dries, I'm seeing as it dries, uh, you can see it's turning a little more kind of a sepia brown. So, so far this is the darkest of all the brown black inks, or all the brown inks, okay? And that's a fairly medium sized to medium fine point. Let's look at the 0.38 Uniball Signo. Evidently, I, I don't know how much of this you can tell really on video, but this is very evidently more brown. Not nearly as brown, even though they also call this brown black. Okay, these are like practically like watercolor pens. These loosen up a lot. Not this one so much. 0.38 does not loosen up much at all. And usually, you know, when you tone ink, I found that pens that are water soluble to a degree, uh, they only do it on the first application of water. So what you could do is easily use these for sketch pens. Go in and tone your drawing, let it dry, and then go in with color. You know, I left one out on the Pilot Juice. They actually had three Pilot Juice pens. They had this ultra fine one here, which is a 0.3, a 0.3. It's a clicker. This feels as fine as the 0.25 High Tech C, but it's a darker brown, a somewhat red brown, um, very similar to the 0.38 in color, although a little lighter. It doesn't re-wet a lot, so it would be usable in watercolor sketching. All right, we're down to our last two. Uh, these are Zebra Sarasas. Both are clip on pen clickers. One is a, point four, a 0 0.4 and the other is a 0 0.5. Uh, now the 0 0.4 is they're calling that brown and the 0.5 they're calling uh, vintage brown gray. So let's take a look at those. Nice smooth. That's a nice kind of a medium middle chocolate brown. All right, let's try the 0.5 millimeter brown gray. Color is a little more neutral as you might expect with the brown gray 
name. I like that color. It's more sepia, not as red. A lot of red in that brown, as you can see. Yeah, interesting. Not as much with this. That ink is not not loosening up much at all. All right, so there you have it. That is the Jet Pens Brown Gel Pen Sampler. And conclusions, um, I would say for drawing purposes, uh, I like the brown of this Frixion and uh, the fact that it was not extremely water soluble. Uh, so if I was going to use it with watercolor, I'd use that or possibly this Pilot Juice here. Uh, if I was wanting the red brown, uh, I would definitely use that. Or the Zebra Sarasa, the 0 .5, 0 0.5. And that's if I was not really wanting it to loosen up and with water. I'm not really f liking this Pilot High Tech C. I mean, when I wet that, that came out almost pink. So that is a very red color, very red-brown color. So these, this Pilot High Tech C 0.25 and 0.4 was my least favorite. So now it's just a matter of getting out and doing some sketching with brown pens. Look forward to it. I hope that was a help, guys. We'll see you in the next video.